Back to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. My name is Trish Gray, and I'll be your host for this edition of Toastmaster Time. Just like in a regular Toastmaster meeting, we're going to have prepared speeches. We're then going to evaluate them to help them improve. For that, we have our very special evaluator, Ashley Harkness. Ashley, what's on the menu for today? Well, Trish, it's good to be working with you again, and we have a very interesting menu today. We have two Toastmasters from the same club and they're going to be making the presentations. We have Lee Light and Joy Montgomery. I am sure we are in for a wonderful program. Oh, I look forward to hearing these speeches. But for now, let's introduce our first guest, Lee Light. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Trish. And how long have you been a member of Amador Toastmasters? I've been a member for about two years. Two years. What brought you to Toastmasters? Well, one of my goals is to be an inspirational speaker. And the first thing I decided I needed to do was to learn how to give speeches. So I joined a Toastmasters club, and it's been so much help. Oh, wonderful. Do you have a particular audience or a topic that you would like to give speeches about? Yes, I like to give inspirational speeches, such as today's speeches is on how to make goals and how to keep them and execute them. And there's other sorts of topics, such as how to love yourself mm -hmm. and how to be present, those types of topics. Wonderful. Are you ready to give your speech? I am. Okay. Well, just stay there for just a moment. I'll give you a few minutes to get set up. But in the meantime, I'd like to let our audience know that when we give speeches in Toastmasters, we work from manuals. They have particular objectives that we want to meet. That way, for example, how to use props or how to tell a story or how to give an inspirational speech. So for that, let's go back to Ashley, who's going to give us the objectives for Lee's speech. Welcome back. Well, thank you very much, Trish. Lee's speech is uh, really about confidence. It's about being confident in front of, uh, of an audience and carrying to them a message that is inspiring to them. So we'll be looking for a strong set of mental images that she creates in the, in the audience's mind. And also we'll be looking at her organization to see how she puts it together so it's logical and it follows a pathway and we all get it. Wonderful. Great. All right. Well, let's go ahead and introduce Lee Light with Write, Break, and Spread It Around. Write, Break, and Spread It Around. Lee Light. I'd like you to take a moment and think about your life. Is there something that you'd like to improve? If so, I'm here to inspire you to create a goal out of it. Now, once you create your goals, you do something very powerful because you get a chance to stop and think about your life and get excited about it. Not only that, but you get to think about where you want it to head and then navigate in that direction. Additionally, when you make your goals, you actually propel yourself forward to make a positive difference in your life and get excited about it. Then, finally, when you achieve your goals, you will realize that you can count on yourself and then you will build self-esteem and that's required for long-term happiness and success. Right now, I would like to give you three tips on how you can attain your goal. Tip number one, write it down. That means write down what your goal is and then give yourself a deadline. And then think about what your life is going to feel like and what it's going to look like after you've attained your goal. What that does is it sends a message to your subconscious that that is your reality. And then you will automatically take actions toward your goal. Tip number two, break it down. That means instead of attacking that big, huge goal, break it down into smaller pieces. 
and that way it'll be a lot easier to attain. And finally, tip number three, spread it around. Tell people around you what your goal is. They'll get excited for you. They'll be inspired themselves and they'll give you tips. And the big thing there is you will set up a wonderful accountability factor with them because once you tell them your goal, now you've got to follow through. Once again, those three tips are write it down, break it down, and spread it around. Now at this point, I want to tell you about a goal that I made a couple months ago. I was thinking about my life and I thought to myself, I want a little bit more excitement. I want to have a fuller and richer life. So I created a goal of my own. And I said, my goal is to be brave and to start doing things that I don't normally do. So I kicked it off by following tip number one and I wrote it down. I wrote down, my goal is to be brave and I'll give myself one year to get there. And then I thought about what it's gonna feel like once I attain my goal. I'm gonna feel excited about my life. I'm gonna feel empowered. Not only that, but I'm gonna have opportunities coming to me from all over the place. My life is gonna be incredible. And then I went on to tip number two, which is break it down. Instead of attacking that big, huge goal of being brave, I said to myself, just do one brave thing every day. It doesn't matter whether it's big or small, just do one big, one brave thing a day. And then the following day, I need to recollect what that was, acknowledge myself, and then encourage myself to do another brave thing. And I've got to tell you, I've been doing so many new things, including taking an extra workout class and signing up to doing Toastmasters television speech today. And finally, at work, what I did was I learned about a brand new program, an exciting strategic program that was being started. I did research on it, and then I went to see my manager. And I suggested that I be the lead for that, and I got it. I truly am excited about what's going on, and I do feel empowered. And you know what? I'm seeing more and more opportunities come my way, and I am ready for them. And then, finally, I followed tip number three, which is spread it around. I told lots of my friends about my goal to be brave, and they inspired me. Not only that, but several of them said, oh my gosh, I want to make being brave my goal too. So I was so excited that I actually inspired them to have better lives too. At this point, I feel like I can do anything. And I know that you can too when you make your goals and you follow the three tips, which are write it down break it down, and spread it around. <clears throat> oh, that was great. I learned some good tips. Yes, so, I think so too. What feedback would you have for Lee? Ah, well, first of all, it was clear that uh, she was talking about uh, what I would hear is pre-visualization of the success of the goal. The biggest thing of being brave is to, of course, launch what you wish to do, but then to be able to see what it's supposed to look like at the end gives you a clear idea of where you're going and how to get there. That's a very important point. I like that. In the idea of breaking it down into small pieces, this is what we tend not to be able to do. Mm. We make the mistake and bag off more than we can chew. Just a big chunk and yeah. it's like, oh, It never works. Tough. And then we're unhappy and then it doesn't yeah. work. Then as far as the talk it up, she went around and told people about what her goal was and what she was going to do. This is uh, inspiring to everyone. It's challenging to her and everyone around them. But at the end, the forcefulness of her presentation came through with the, the statement, I can do anything, you can too. So for an inspirational speech, I believe she hit all the marks. 
Would you have any suggestions for something she might want to try differently next time? I do, as a matter of fact. Uh, what I missed were the anecdotes, uh, the, the steps along the way, uh, the things that happened that might have turned her off or turned her back on or whatever. Some little small stories would have been helpful, I think. Like maybe one, she said brave, but that's kind of a big topic. I mean, what does brave mean? You know, maybe when she talked about, uh, you know, being on the show, you know, her sense of either, you know, I don't want to say being frightened, but I mean, you know, the nervousness and... Well, this is know. all real new, and this is a very alien environment as it, as it is. So the key here is, of course, stepping up and stepping out. But I, I want to hear a personal story. Uh, there's nothing works as well as talking about something that you did where you had a trial and you ended up with success. Why not? Yeah, just g give a sense of the emotion that mm -hmm. she felt going into it, the nervousness, and then maybe success, maybe a failure, something she realized she needed to do something a little bit differently, and then it was like, yay! And I did she it. came to a Toastmasters club to get that help, and look what's happening. She's in front of a television camera. Wonderful. Yes, it okay, is. Okay, yeah. All yeah. right. So, tell you what, why don't we take a short break and you're watching Toastmaster Time, and we'll be right back. Oops, I guess we just cut. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease... Freedom like requires that, leadership, no and leadership requires parties. oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. I'm here with our second guest, Joy Montgomery. Welcome back to the show. Do you remember how many times you've been on the show? I think it's three. Three. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Okay. Dare I ask how long you've been a member of Toastmasters? I've been a Toastmaster for 30 years. 30 years. I and kind of feel like you stay because it changed my life and I want to help it change lives for other people. So. Wonderful. It just sounds like you're just even being in Toastmasters around your club members is an inspiring story to them. It is. <laughs> so, for, but you're also with Amador Valley, correct? Yes. Okay. So, if you could only pick two items that you would tell to new members about why they need to join Toastmasters, what would you, what advice would that be? It would be confidence and confidence. So you feel that Toastmasters has given you a lot of confidence? I do. I used to be invisible. Invisible? Invisible. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> That's because of Toastmasters. So when you say, inv just curiosity, when you say invisible, what, describe how that looked like. Why, why would you describe yourself as being invisible? I could go to a party and have someone say the next week, it's too bad you couldn't make it to the party. It was wonderful. Oh, no. Just, oh. Invisible. Okay. All right. So sometimes invisible is an attitude. And Toastmasters has helped you push beyond that so that you feel comfortable going up to strangers or mm -hmm. people and, and talking to them. <laughs> oh, no, no, come on. We've known each other. So that's wonderful. That's great. Okay. Is there anything in particular you'd like us to know about the speech you're giving today? It was inspired by my children. Your children. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's... That's always a good source of, of material yes. <laughs> for a speech. All right, so you ready to give your speech? I am. All right, so just stay there for just a moment to let you get set up. But in the meantime, I'd like to let our audience know that Toastmasters is a worldwide organization. We have over 300,000 members in pretty much every country across the globe. We have members in uh, Malaysia and Saudi Arabia and India and China and obviously here in the United States. So wherever you go in the entire world, there's sure to be a Toastmasters Club, and they'd love to have you come visit. So let's c go back to our evaluator, Ashley, and why don't you give us Joy's objectives? Hmm. Well, Joy will be working on a project about vocal variety. We'll be uh, hearing her, and ha not so much the, the context of her speech or what she's saying, but how she says it. 
so that we'll get a sense of, let's say, uh, changes in volume, perhaps rate and pitch, maybe the quality of her voice. She might even be speaking in voices. She may do something unusual that we don't expect, but that will be all part of the vocal part of this. We'll be uh, seeing her em emphasize this, the, the main points one way or another, and we may even learn a little bit about how silence can really help to get the message across. Okay, great. Well, let's introduce our next speaker, Joy Montgomery. Difference is not a division. Difference is not a division. Joy Montgomery. My daughter sent me something on Facebook the other day. The idea of it was that if you're losing your way and not exactly sure what you're doing with your life, talk to a three-year-old and they'll get your perspective straightened out which made me think about when they were small. My son was six, my daughter was two. We went to a laundromat one day, oh, a terrible day, raining and dark and ugly. And it was in a busy shopping center, so I was worried about the children, got them herded into the laundromat. And at the same time, a young African-American woman arrived with her little boy, who was about four. So the three of them were having a wonderful time Children will play any place you put them. And they were having fun. We were doing our work, chatting a little bit. All of a sudden, the place was silent. And both of us thought, oh my gosh, the kids just got out into the parking lot in the rain. And we hurried out toward the door. But in the last aisle, all three of them were sitting on the floor, feeling each other's hair. And we looked at each other, we, we kind of chuckled and went back to folding our clothes and the rest of the things that we had to do. Got home and I put my little daughter Elise down for her nap. Robbie went and turned on the TV to watch cartoons. I was fixing dinner and all of a sudden he said, Mom, you know something? And I said, I know a lot of things, Rob. And he said, that little boy's hair felt really weird. And I didn't say anything. And he went back to watching his cartoons, and a couple minutes went by, and he said, Mom, you know something else? And I said, I know a lot of things. And he said, I think my hair felt really weird to him, too. And I thought, yes! Yes, if I don't do anything else in life, I've gotten the message across that difference is not a division. Difference is not a bad thing. Difference is interesting. I've served my purpose because they're going to grow up into people who don't see difference as a reason to divide people, to tear a country apart. They're going to be positive in their dealings with other people. That inspired me to write the song that I'm going to share with you. A friend of mine from college recorded the music for me, and it stayed in my head all these years because it's not really on paper. It's the message that they had from me and the message that they gave to that other family. Black skin, red skin, yellow skin, white, there's something there that isn't quite right. Take a lump of coal, a raven's feather, or some pretty shoes of patent leather. Next to them, the black skin's brown, brown skin, red skin, yellow skin, white. Brown skin, red skin, yellow skin, white. There's something there that isn't quite right. Take a sunflower. Oh, Take a ripe tomato, a wild red rose, or a lava bed while the lava flows. Next to them, the red skin's brown, brown skin, brown skin, yellow skin, white. Brown skin, brown skin, yellow skin, white. There's something there that isn't quite right. Take a sunflower tall, a lemonade cold, or a wedding band of precious gold. Next to them, the yellow's brown, 
Brown skin, brown skin, brown skin, white. Brown skin, brown skin, brown skin, white. There's something there that isn't quite right. Take a, take a snow-capped peak, a passing cloud, or a wintry road before it's plowed. Next to them, the white skin's brown. Brown skin, brown skin, brown skin, brown. Interesting. Okay, so what feedback do you have for Joy? Well, in the first part of her speech, it was clear that she was uh, using a constant flowing tone, uh, volume, pitch, rate, they're all stabilized. <clears throat> when she got to the part where she introduced the presentation with her children, the three and the four-year-old, and then the later interrogation, as it were, I don't know, yeah. that's, that's a strong word, yeah. but I mean, yeah. she was talking to them. Then the pitch, the rates, the volume began to change. <clears throat> but we didn't get child talk. We didn't get, you know, tell you. We got, yeah. it was, because it was a serious, serious Subject, moment. Yeah. And when she comes up with the revelation of, yes, yes, it worked. This is a moment where the emphasis was appropriate and enough to carry us into the next part. Now, when she was singing, all we, all we had there was all, all the rate, all the pitch, up and down, volume, and the message was uh, uh, very clear. It was a round, a, a song of a round, and we did a very good job of bringing home the idea of all of the differences and the similarities, and why not? To end on a song is a very big challenge, but to end with silence? Well, but, you know, the part that I really liked was she was trying <coughs> to talk about, for example, the snow-capped mountain. You know, that's very white. And we think of white skin. Well, obviously, they're not the same. You know, we call them white, but they're not the same. And you noticed how she ended. She had a white piece of paper on her hand, and it's obvious that the white piece of paper was a very different type of white than what we think of as white skin. So I like the fact that she was trying to show these contrasts and these differences, and we have these preconceptions in our mind of, you know, this is what white is, this is what brown is, this is what red is. And her, but her theme was that it wasn't a devising, uh, devising thing, <clears throat> that the division was superficial at, at best, and that when you came right down to it, the little kid said, I'll bet he thought my hair was, was strange. Such a revelation. Now that's the whole point of this. Uh, the message, of course, uh, then the, the, what she was working on were vocal variety, but the message came through much clearer because she had strong motives in that. She didn't start out that way, but I think that was intentional, and it left us with an ending that was dramatic. You know, I, I think you had a good point was at the beginning, it, it was, I won't say monotone, but it was kind of a more level type tone, mm -hmm, it was. and in some ways that you almost kind of get lulled to the sense of complacency, and so when she finally went into this, you know, the, the different types of emotions with the kids, and then, you know, finally they got it. it. I think in some ways it made that entrance more powerful because it just, you know, you're like... Well, Aah. she was leading up to an anecdote. Yeah. The, being in the laundromat and all the different people that are in there and all of the different clothes going around in the dryer, come on, the whole thing is, is, is primed for this kind of a deal of seeing the differences between them. And to, to come around and see that the little kids are sitting down looking at each other and mm -hmm. checking it out. Uh, this, I'm sure, was something that they would carry forward for a long time. So, I Do you have any some, something you might want to suggest you do a little bit differently next time? Well, when you're doing a, a, um, <clears throat> a, a, a vocal variety speech, I believe that uh, there must be a lot of opportunities for us to see how the vocal variety works. In the first part of the speech, I think she could have done some more uh, efforts in that area. But otherwise, coming down to the end where she held our attention up until she starts doing the song, and then the song goes all over the place, why not? Great. So okay. what I have is uh, more just a, a sharpening up, perhaps. Okay. But well, thank you very much for that evaluation, Ashley. And we're going to be taking another break, but you're watching Toastmaster Time, and we'll be right back. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, 
tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease... Freedom like requires that, leadership, and leadership, leadership requires oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. Actually, just in the short time that we have left, I mentioned briefly about the new education program that we're testing here in District 57 called Pathways. Absolutely. What's Absolutely. been your experience? Well, I was around when they first uh, began deciding that the program that Toastmaster had needed to be updated. And at that time, we didn't do things with webs and, and yeah. internets and stuff, and all of that has changed. And Pathways is the, a great opportunity for us to not only move into the future, but in a different way with lots of other new opportunities. So I yeah, think it's a wonderful thing. All the new e-learning capabilities and audio visuals and uh, you know, videos to give you tips on how to do an icebreaker speech. That's true. The, the speech is all there, but it's also a major uh, improvement on the way they, they teach leadership because uh -huh. you're actually asked to do projects. Uh -huh. The fact is that you can move faster through the program. So all of this is very important, and I think Pathways is probably the best thing they've done in a, in a long, long time. And I've been around for a while on this thing. <laughs> well, wonderful. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you having on the show. And for it's now, it looks like that's our show for today. It, if you'd like more information about Toastmaster Time, we do tape in the San Francisco Bay Area. You can go to our website at toastmastertime.com. We're sponsored by District 57 of Toastmasters. If you'd like information about local events, you can go to their website at d57tm.org. If you'd like information about Toastmasters in general, you can go to the Toastmasters website to find a club near you or just information about how Toastmasters may benefit you. And their website is toastmasters.org. I definitely love to let you know that we appreciate all of our volunteers at the Media Center here in Palo Alto because without them we don't have a show. They've always been great to us. I'd like to thank all of our guests for today. We had Lee Light and Joey Montgomery and our always wonderful special evaluator Ashley Harkness. My name is Trish Gray. I've been your host. We invite you to speak up and join Toastmasters.